I hope that by now you've got the hang of uh, cutting fabric because for the following pieces, the back pocket bag, front pocket bag, and for the waistband lining that I have here, we're going to be cutting it from our lining fabric. And the lining fabric is this sort of a polyester, very slick, um, sort of silky feeling fabric. It tends to be very slippery and when you're cutting the fabric, um, it tends to, both layers that sit on top of each other, tend to slip and slide in all sorts of directions. So it can be harder, harder to cut and harder to mark with precision. I mean, cutting it is actually easier, but making sure it's precise can be a bit harder. So take your time, you know, don't get worked up. There's good news too though, because I don't see a good and a bad side on this type of fabric. I just try to make sure that I cut everything from the same side, but apart from that, I really don't know if there's a difference. Maybe there is, probably there is, but I don't know about it. So we're gonna be cutting these now. However, there's a few things I have to point out with these pattern pieces because they require some extra manipulation. We'll get into that. Okay, first of all about the back pocket bag. We're gonna be cutting four of these, as you can see, but we need two slightly longer and two slightly shorter molds. Now, you see these three dashed lines here. Actually, what you need to do is you need to fold it upwards on the first dashed line, dashed line, there we go and fold it back down again on the second dash line so that the first and the third one meet. There we go. So, two like this, two like this. So we need two long versions and two short versions. The front pocket is um, if possible, even more uh, confusing. What you need to do is, you need to cut two with this extension here, and then cut two without, well, without that extension there. For each of these two, yes, it gets more complex, you need to cut one with this extension on this side, and one without, so just fold on this line. Don't worry about these little straight lines, that's just an, already affected the pattern. Okay, so one, you get two with this, one like this, and one like this, two without this, one like this, and one like this. So in total we're gonna have four different shapes for this bag, and I probably should find a better way to illustrate it, I'll try to explain it here. But basically we want one, Two, three, four. That's what we need to cut this. There's good news too. This waistband lining, just one simple draw cut. Hey, here's something I absolutely forgot to mention earlier. Um, we're also gonna be putting lining on the front, on the inside, uh, of your legs at the front and to do that what I did is I laid out um, the pattern this is the front block of our trousers and um, there's actually a, a dashed line on it that you can see here hopefully see that dashed line I just folded it back um, there and then just traced the pattern once upside down here and then once here correctly now I could have folded it double traced it once and cut it. But to be honest, this fabric is so uh, slippery that I just prefer to trace it twice, cut it twice. It's just less hassle than trying, not, trying to get it not to slip too much when you're cutting it double. So this is a piece that I forgot to mention that you also, also have to cut from, uh, from the lining fabric. Okay, I've marked all the pattern pieces on the lining fabric. Um, I've got the fabric laid out in a single layer, so I drew certain things twice because I just find it to be easier. We've got the front here, the front trouser block up to where the lining stops. We get this one and two, the mirror image of it, this, these two. Then here we got our back pockets. We've got um, long versions, two long versions, and then we get two of the shorter variety, right there. Here we've got our four versions of our front pocket. We got this one that has the extension on the fly side and on the pocket side. This one which has the extension on the fly side but not on the pocket side. There's this one that has not the extension on the fly side, neither the extension on the pocket side. Oh, sorry, 
not on the fly side, but it has it on the pocket side. And then there's this one that has it not on the pocket side and also not, not on the fly side and also not on the pocket side. Boy, I'm confusing. Okay, please ignore this one here. This is just me being an idiot. I laid out the pattern pieces, but then I also had to put in the waistband lining and to make that fit better, I just moved this one down to around here. So these are all the pieces. I'm ready to cut this out and after that we just have a bit more cutting to do in the interface. Okay, a uh, quick note about the finish of this uh, leg lining um, here at the bottom. Um, you should cut this with pinking shears if you have them. Pinking shears or this type of scissors, now these are horrible, um, they have like a sawtooth blade so they cut a zigzag. If you've got nice ones you cut a really nice zigzag. If you have ones like mine it looks a bit like rats just sort of chewed on your fabric. However this will keep the fabric from raveling and so it means we don't have to apply a seam or any other finish there which is good because we don't want to show it through the fabric uh, when you're wearing trousers. If you don't have pinking shears you can just cut straight here on this line but if you do um, cut it with pinking shears only this line and of course same on that part. I've cut out all the lining pieces. I've got them neatly piled up here, as you can see, all the different parts. Um, the four versions of the front pocket, um, the back pockets, um, second back, four back pockets actually, the front leg and the, and the waistband lining. There's no need to transfer any pattern marking on these pieces. Um, that's not necessarily for the lining, just um, cut them out and we're done. We're almost done here. The only thing left to do is cut out this piece I, um, the back pocket interfacing, which should be cut out of um, interfacing fabric. Now, we're going to be using um, fusible interfacing. I don't know if this shows up very well on camera, but you get like a very sort of a shiny side to this interfacing. That's like a coating of plastic on it. And then just like a, a, a dull um, side. Um, this is fusible interfacing. What that means is that we're going to cut out a piece like this and um, if you iron this onto your fabric, you put the shiny side onto, let's imagine this paper is fabric, you put the shiny side onto your fabric and then you iron it from this side and then the interfacing will actually stick to your fabric and that adds some strength to your fabric and we're actually going to be using this um, at the back pockets, at the welt pockets to, to give them some extra strength because um, it's, it's an area that gets a lot of wear and tear. Um, this is a pretty lightweight fusible interfacing. Your fabric shop should stock this. They typically come in different weights so you get really stiff stuff and then you know, this doesn't have to be stiff because you don't want to see, a, uh, see it through the trousers. It's also dark because we're using dark fabric. Typically this also comes in, uh, in white. Uh, so I'm going to cut that out now. That's the last thing we have to cut today. As you can see I got four of them marked and I'm going to be cutting them out now. If I don't get caught in. There's no real grain line in this um, interfacing fabric. So, you know, just align them in an economic way on whatever interfacing you've got. And cut them out. Okay, all done here. You've got four of these babies cut out. Um, you don't want to go with an iron near them until it's that time in our construction process when I'll tell you to do this. Apart from these four, all of the pattern pieces, what I would propose is that you give them a gentle ironing so that they're nice and flat. Now, don't put it too uh, warm. That lining fabric, some lining fabric really doesn't handle heat very well. Also, we'll be careful, don't iron them too hot, just iron them gently so that they're nice and flat and that you're well prepared to start the next leg of our journey in Trousers from Scratch, which will be part four. And I think we'll probably get around to doing some sewing. Bye.